All right, we should be live now, guys. Uh, we are talking uh, MLB baseball for the 21st of July, Wednesday night. Again, we're going to do a bunch of members-only videos free to the public. I got some real-life changes I'm making. It just for temporarily is really affecting my schedule. Won't be as bad moving forward. So uh, for the time being, a lot of you guys get some free stuff, which I'm sure you don't hate. No, no, the free stuff is never bad. And uh, just broke down that early slate, and this one has at least slightly better pitching options. Yeah, agreed. Uh, you are never a McCullers guy. What are your thoughts on him against your Cleveland Indians, though? Yeah, he's definitely in play. The game log is all that really needs to be said. He's pitching really well. Doesn't mean he couldn't have a bad start here. You know, he's a guy that gets into his, into his own head, can get hit by anyone. So if he's like 80% owned, I see stacking Cleveland in big tournaments. But on paper, he looks like the best pitcher on the slate with Robbie Ray in such a tough spot. Yeah, you don't really like picking on Boston. Uh, I will say Ray has been incredible this season. I, I want to continue to give this guy his credit. I really thought his career was not done, but that the any opportunity to be like an actual SP1 was far in the rear view, and he's been phenomenal this season. So really credit to this guy. It's not a great spot, but I don't think he's out of play just on pure talent alone. Um, I agree. I agree. I just hate going against Boston. Uh, no arguments here. I don't want to go up against Boston either. But after these top two guys, like there's not a lot of love, love, love situations. Like give me Robbie Ray at 9,900 versus Logan Webb against the Dodgers for 8,800. Agreed. So uh, what about Urias? Um, I think Urias is in play. He didn't pitch well in Colorado that one start, but that's okay. I mean, I don't love picking on the Giants, but I don't hate it either. Um, I think he's in play. I don't think any more or any less, to be honest. I, quite frankly, I mean, this guy's an enigma, right? I mean, he has one of the wilder game logs of any pitcher in baseball. I mean, he's got a handful of dominant starts this year, a bunch of mediocre ones and a bunch of terrible ones. He has, uh, some great stuff, but he does not always have, does not always put it together. Start by start thing for him. Can you think of a guy who is more of an enigma like this that like literally like I think if you broke down his starts it wouldn't be an exact one third one third one third but it's like one out of three he's really really good one out of three he's bad and one out of three he's very eh, whatever it's pretty bizarre yeah because his stuff like you know they've loved this guy for a long time his stuff when he's on is electric but my lord he's got some bad ones yes yes he does I, I'd probably rather use Robbie Ray than Urias to be honest with you I, I think Boston's offense is more potent but I respect the hell out of San Fran at this point. So do I. I don't love either of them. Okay. And I also like Wainwright. What so have we been saying about Wainwright? Big thing. At home, right? At home. Uh, much better there. The Cubs strike out a ton. So, yeah, I think Wainwright's right up there as one of the top pitchers on the slate for sure. I am so over this Cubs team just in general. Uh, I, I feel like this is one where you got to start over almost. I know okay. Baez is now asking for $200 million. I, I just think there's – Whatever this team had years ago to win that World Series, it just isn't there anymore. I agree. So, I, I mean, do what you must, guys, but you see the Cubs being sellers at the deadline? Definitely. I, I think you have to. I think you have to look yourselves in the mirror and realize that we got our title, but it, it just hasn't been very good since then. We're probably the third, maybe the fourth best team in the division. Yeah, I'm with you 100% there. All right, speaking of Cubs, any interest in Hendricks? A slight interest. I can see a pitcher's duel here. Okay. Uh, Logan Webb, I think we can go right past. No, Cease I'm interested in, though. Yeah, so Cease is kind of like uh, Urias in some respects. Like, he can yeah. be really, really good. He's also a guy you can stack against. So, I'm Cease over the Twins, but he's a tough guy to feel confident about. I have no arguments. Um, as far as upside goes, though, I mean, his upside matches anybody else on the slate. You're not going to see it as much as you see McCullers, Ray, and maybe even, well, no, probably about the same as Arias, but he's, a, he's another roller coaster ride. No doubt about that. What about your new favorite pitcher, Eric Fetty? No. Yeah, definitely come back down to earth. He had a nice little run right there, but this is definitely the guy that you've accused him of being, and he is making you look right right now. Yeah, he is. He is not good. So... 
Uh, he's had an interesting season. It looks really good for a while, and he could be good on Wednesday. It's possible, but <laughs> no thanks. Great. Garrett Richards is a no. Pineda? No. No, I don't think there's anybody on the cheap I'm too interested. How about you? If I would say this. I'm not going to use him. If there was one game for Matt Manning to pitch well, it would be against this Rangers offense. Yeah, okay. Uh, he's 4,100. Uh, crazier things have happened. Now, I think I like the Rangers side more, but they've got shut out three games in a row. Um, they're not good. Newsflash. Yeah. I mean, when you have a bad pitcher versus a bad offense, anything can happen. Amen. Um, all right. I guess right now, McCullers, Ray, Wainwright, I, I, I would be double spending up right here would yeah. be my first thoughts. I mean, especially because I like the Rangers offense against Manning. I don't care how many games they've got shut out in a row or whatever. Like, they're the side I like there, and I'm sure they're cheap. All right. Well, speaking of teams that you can like, you know, we kind of talked about Eric Fetty. He had a really nice year going. And then the last four starts happened, and he has given up 25 hits over his last 14 innings. Four of those have left the ballpark. He's been walking guys like crazy. Uh, I don't ever love the Miami offense, but the Miami offensive guys are clearly in play here. Yeah, they're in play. I just I hardly ever use them. I think they often get more love than – I, I like, and I'm just not really ever feeling them. That said, yeah, Duvall, if you want to use those guys, I get it. Yeah, I, I think we, we touched on this young man briefly, but Juan Soto is currently all that in a bag of chips, and I, it's not unexpected. We said, I swear, it was like a month ago, and we're like, just wait. He's going to get red hot, and he's going to be batting over 300 with a lot of home runs before you know it, and here you go. Great. You can't keep a great hitter down forever. Exactly. You know what is unexpected, though? Alcides Escobar. Yes. Cover off the ball. Like, what is this? I mean, I thought he was just done because he was too old. He couldn't even hit five years ago. He's never been able to hit. Right? And now, like, he's raking. Yeah, 3,300. I get it. I mean, obviously, you're not going to look at uh, Mr. Jordan Holloway and be scared of him. But he's pitched well. When you're leading off in front of Trey Turner and Juan Soto, you're going to get good pitches to hit. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I guess, you know what, Jordan, you've had two nice starts in a row, so I'm going to give you your credit where it's due, but I am still would much rather use Trey Turner and Juan Soto. Same. Top of the order stack. All right, moving over to Philadelphia against New York. Uh, I mean, this looks like a game where we should get some offense, right? Uh, this has got to be the spot where everyone goes, doesn't it? I, I mean, it looks like it. Yeah, Asher, which I, he sucks. I'm used to using the Yankees against him. The thing about the Yankees is their lineup is awful right now with all these guys out. But Mayhew got scratched. So, um, yeah, their lineup just sucks right now. They, this Their lineup tonight, here, I'm going to read it to you. Um, you won't believe it, but I'm, I'm not lying to you, I promise. Brett Gardner leading off. Stanton hitting second. Well, I can legit read it right here. I actually have the Yankees box score pulled up. Um, that's a pretty terrible bottom half of the lineup. Not that the top half of the lineup is exactly having a great season either with uh, Torres batting 239 and Sanchez barely over 200. I mean, Gardner's your leadoff guy. Yeah, he's seen better years for sure. So um, you got cheap pieces, though. And yeah, I like the offense in this game. Namely the Philly side, though, I would say. Yeah, they're just they're, – they're affordable, too. I mean, why is McCutcheon only 3,100? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Rio Muto, Didi Gregorius, uh, Reese Hoskins, who homered tonight, Bryce Harper. I mean, I like all these guys. I like them tonight, and I like them tomorrow, even though they're not doing much. It's, they've, they've scored two runs in the top of the – and it's the top of the fifth. So still plenty of time for them to go off, and I'm counting on them to do just that. All right, Robbie Ray against the Red Sox. If you don't like Robbie Ray, I assume you're probably still not really trying to get to the Red Sox, though. Nah, I mean, I could see using, like, a J.D. Martinez one-off who's really cheap, and I would still say better than Robbie Ray. This year they've been comparable, but if you ask me to, like, go into next season, who I'd rather have on my team, the answer is J.D. Martinez. No questions about it. And this is, like, Robbie Ray's peak. Yeah. And Martinez is just having a normal J.D. Martinez year, and they're comparable. 
Yep, agreed. Uh, it wouldn't even, I wouldn't even have to think about that one. I would clearly want to take J.D. Martinez if we were doing some sort of draft for our teams. And they, you know, I'm sitting there in round two with those two guys available. For sure, but I get it. There's a lot of other good hitters on the slate. You don't have to pick on the Rob today. You know, Garrett Richards has been a little better the last two starts, but give me as much Toronto as you want. Uh, they're always going to be a little bit pricey, but their outfield's affordable. I'm with you 100%. And actually, as far as their price tags go, they're affordable for what we've seen them at. I mean, we've seen Vlad at, like, what, 6300 6 k is not cheap, but it's not the highest he's been. Simeon's pricey, too, but, you know, Bichette's only 5100 The outfielders are all sub-5K. You can get to a bunch of these guys. For sure. Hey, Oscar, really cheap. He's just been awesome. Yeah, he's having a great year. He's an all-star. For sure. So, yeah, I mean, you can always get me on board in Toronto. All right, let's go back to this Texas-Detroit game that we kind of touched on a little bit. You know, Jordan Lyles is a guy who tends to get picked on in the DFS world. I can see using, you know, Tigers bats against him. And you've already mentioned your love for the Rangers on this one. Uh, Joey Gallo, 5,100, but definitely a double-bomb candidate. I definitely don't want the Rangers if they're going to be popular, though. Oh, yeah, I can see that. And uh, Akil Badu. I, again, he'll probably be chalk. Yeah, I, I bet Detroit gets love, but deservedly so. I mean, they've been, you know, we kind of look at Texas and Detroit as similar matchups. At least yeah. I do. They're, Detroit has been worlds better. I mean, they're just not. But you know what I don't I mean? have the numbers in front of me, but I'm willing to bet that over the past month, Detroit's been a mediocre offense. They haven't been bad. Agreed. So, I mean, Badu is 3,300, batting leadoff, running, hitting for a little bit of power. Grossman's only 3,600. Um, my boy Scope, I know he had a big day the other day. Played well again the night after that. He's, you know, a very streaky hitter. Um, this goes back before the All-Star break, though. He got a bunch of double hit games in a row. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's been awesome this year. Yeah, you got to think Detroit's got, well, they're going to be sellers, of course, but He's a guy who's probably going to get overpaid for. And, you know, they get some nice prospects out of it. Detroit hasn't had a lot to be hopeful for for several years now, but this could be a good year for them to sell some assets. I was going to say, they haven't even had assets to sell in previous years. Now, at least, like you said, they should be able to get, like, a decent prospect or two for scope the way he's hitting this year. I mean, he would add a lot to Milwaukee's lineup, Cleveland's That's lineup. what I was thinking of. And I know it makes it easy to think of that because Milwaukee's, you know, mediocre on the offensive side of things and but has a real shot this year that a bat like this would help my i'm hesitant on this one only because we did this a couple years ago with him and he was not very good for milwaukee after he was playing real well before he got there fair enough fair enough so he would look really good if he plays like this i'm with you i get it so uh candy man detroit is they're not a good baseball team, but their offense is better than their pitching. Their offense is better than their pitching by a country mile. I, it's not saying much. Uh, me and you might be better offensively than their pitching, but. Truth. Uh, yeah, I'm, I respect Lyles over Manning, but I definitely respect Detroit over Texas. So I, I think I'm more Detroit best as well. Okay. Yeah. I want to see ownership and that's where I can really make my decision too early. I think that. You know, there's cases for both. The case for Texas would be ownership against the shitty Manning. But if they're getting a lot of love, then I think I'd go to the Manning side, honestly. Yeah, I get you on that one. That makes a lot of sense. But do I'm just assuming there will be chalk. So if you're playing a cash game, he's going to be a premier pay down option. For sure. All right. So we kind of touched on Dylan Cease. Uh, we also mentioned that Dylan Cease is a guy you can stack against. I know we had looked at him like a start or two ago, and he'd given up like six earned runs or more and four of ten or something like that. Uh, all that being said, I don't like that idea enough to actually go with like any version of a twin stack today. You want a one-off and Nelson Cruz or something, cool, do your thing. But uh, I'll probably mostly just stay away from anybody on Minnesota. I can't do it on this slate with like Lyles and Matt Manning and Garrett Richards on the hill. You know, agreed, 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 agreed. So um, how about as far as White Sox backs against Pineda? I think I'm really just out on this game. And if I were to do anything, it would be Dylan Cease. Same. It would be both the White Sox bats and Cease for me. Like I view them similarly, like don't really want to pick on Pineda, but they're looking good right now. And they're not. He's struggled recently. Yeah. And they're not going to get any love. So 
you know, if I were like multi entering, I'd have some White Sox stacks. The Twins bullpen sucks. Their team just looks, you know, they're just a dead man walking. For sure, they're another team that should be selling off assets at the uh, yes. real quickly. For sure, as July has gone way too fast on me. All right, Cleveland against Houston. Uh, I do think McCullers is probably my top pitcher on this one. Uh, and then as far as Houston bats go, I mean, this Eli Morgan guy. <sighs> He's got a lot of Matt Manning in him. Yeah, a lot of Matt Manning in him. He's a little bit better, I would say, right now. But, yeah, I mean, Houston's got to be right up there as one of the top offenses. And it goes back to a point that uh, you probably hit home as much as anybody in the DFS world. Like, Houston's actually good. Like, this is not picking up. This is not taking – and I know you can like the Rangers tomorrow, but still agree at this point, which is, like, the Astros' bats are actually really, really good and way too cheap today. Yeah, agreed. I mean, they should get love. I'm sure this looks like, yeah, even more so than like the Philly. They they will. Uh, Brantley at 3,400. Freaking uh, Tucker, Alvarez, Altuve, all of them. I mean, they all they're in great they're in a great spot. They are, and and they're they're talented. So I I do think the whole Houston side of things in this one's going to be popular. The, both the bats and the pitcher. Yep, agreed. All right, Chicago against St. Louis. I think we're team pitching duel on this one. Not that you can't pick an offensive guy from it. Uh, I just I would prefer the pitchers here. I have no interest in the bats personally. Yeah, same. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not interested in the bats here. Could I Tyler mean, or Neil Homer? Yeah, of course he could Homer, but he's not going to make one of my three outfield spots. Agreed. All right, last game up, San Fran against the Dodgers, two of the better teams in baseball. We got Logan Webb versus Urias. We've made our points on why not to use Urias, why he probably isn't going to be our top guy. Uh, I still think I'm, I'm much more likely to use Urias than I would be like to load up on San Fran, but that doesn't mean a low-owned San Fran piece here or there isn't kind of intriguing. Yeah, it's just like Cease and the Twins. Exact same. You're right about that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I probably just bow out on both sides of it because I have pitchers I like and I have offenses I like. There's no reason to get overly cute with it. I agree. It would definitely be Urias before the San Fran bats, though, like just with his upside. But I'm with you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, how about the Dodgers bats against Logan Webb? Yeah, Logan Webb's been fine, though. Uh, I mean, he wasn't great last time out. But he wasn't actually been home. good recently. Yeah, he was hurt for a while, though. Um, so I don't know. I mean, this is one I definitely use the Dodgers bats over him. And the thing I'll say about these, yeah. they have like random games where they just go nuts. Like yeah, against Caleb Smith that one night. They've done it a couple times this year. They have a ton of guys that can hit home runs. Um, so that's what wins in DFS. I mean, even the guys that aren't having great years can all homer. Bellinger, you know, Pollock got hot for that stretch. Will Smith, Mookie Betts, obviously, if he's in the lineup. So, yeah, I mean, the Dodgers kind of, for me, would be of all stack or nothing. Yeah, and Betts, prior to leaving with that hip injury, was starting to get ungodly hot. Yeah, uh, so hopefully he's back in there because I don't think he's in there tonight. No, but they expected him back, so I think he's got a good opportunity to make it tomorrow. I mean, this is a guy who threw up 76, 111 DK points over a four-game stretch. That is one of the best four-game stretches you'll see all season. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely his best all year, uh, for yeah. sure. And if he's out of the lineup, that makes him a little bit cheaper, which is kind of we brought up in another team earlier. For sure, makes a lot of sense. So, all right, uh, just as a quick recap, I mean, I guess I, I like the Houston bats, but I don't have any cheap pitchers I like. So they're not expensive, I, though. But if I go like Wainwright McCullers, like the decisions need to be made. Like I can't play all the 5K Houston guys. Like I can right. get to like maybe the outfielders with Tucker and Brantley. Correa was only 4,600. Uh, I'll get as much of them as I can, but I'm not going to be able to probably do the full-out stack of the best hitters. No, I get that. But then, you know, you've also got some of these Philly guys we talked about, Segura, Gregorius, um, who are really cheap. So there's cheap guys all over, I think. So uh, stack-wise, Philly, Toronto, Houston, and then maybe some checking out the ownership on the Texas Detroit game. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm feeling. If that game's getting no love, I love it. If it's getting a lot of love, I don't love it. And this is another one. You know, when, when you rock out the write up, you're going to have better ownership ideas. This is one of those days. If you tell me Toronto's chalk and Houston is unowned, give me all the Astros I can get in tournaments. 
The flip side of that's the same way. If like Houston's crazy chalk, hook me up with some Toronto or Philly. Houston will be crazy chalk, I have to imagine. Yeah, I agree. I, I no arguments on that. I agree. Um, which could be good for Toronto and Philly. And I don't think Texas is chalky at all. I mean, they've been so bad. They are in a good spot, but there's other good spots. We just talked about Houston. People aren't playing Texas over Houston. They're ma- that are making like one lineup. That will really cut into like the ownership of probably like a Joey Gallo because Alvarez at the same price probably gets significantly more love. Exactly. You have to assume so. I mean, Gallo will get some love here, but like he has a, So, I mean, yeah, I'm with you. This is such a perfect spot for the Rangers, though, particularly because Manning could not get strikeouts. So uh, I like them here. I hope they don't get love. Yeah. Well, we will check back tomorrow and hit you with the information later in the day. Uh, that about does it for tonight. Uh, just to recap on pitching, like I said, I think Wainwright McCullers would be my huckleberries. If you had to set your lineup 24 hours in advance, what would you do? I think Wainwright and I hate using McCullers. Like, pull up Hendricks real quick. I just want to see like what he's done. Uh, yeah, probably McCullers and Wainwright. Yeah, I'll take Wainwright over Hendricks. Um, not for real life. In real life, I'd probably take Hendricks over Wainwright, but in DFS, give me Wainwright over. I think in their careers, I'll take Wainwright over Hendricks. Wow. Like Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now, I think it's dead, dead even. I think in the past couple of years, it's been Hendricks, like easily. Wainwright's had a few treasures where he's been on like close to being out, and that's when Hendricks had become good. Yeah. Definitely give me way right over Hendricks, though, for DFS. Uh, more strikeouts. And the Cubs strike out more than St. Louis, if my memory serves me correctly. I am with you. So. All right, guys. Good luck all the way through Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.